Culture Crunch Army. Okay, so with season six now well underway and the preseason almost at an end, you might be wondering how some of the best controller players are going to adopt to the changes to the game. Yo, I'm your motivation guy, and today we're gonna be going over some of the best controller settings and sensitivities that you can use to stay on top of season six. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's get this going. Fortnite fans across the world are rejoicing this season because the pump has once again been brought back to the game. But don't allow your love of the pump, you know, to really blind you guys on, you know, how much the meta has changed this season. You know, as two other new shotguns have been added to the game. So both the new makeshift shotgun and the primal shotgun take a whole lot of skill to use correctly. And the pump is really just the cherry on the cake. So to play with these weapons, you're going to want to have a sensitivity that gives you the best accuracy while also balancing things out between your building and editing so that you can just really push and fight to the best of your ability. All right, so the most optimal sensitivity would be a low to medium look and ADS sensitivity and a medium to high edit and build sensitivity. So editing and building quicker than your opponent is crucial in a fight. I'm sure you already know that. You know, as it really just allows you to get close to them and have the best piece control. But after you've got them boxed, having a lower to medium look sensitivity is the best for being accurate with your shots. And it's definitely gonna help you finish your opponents with ease. So a great way to start finding the best settings for you would be to check out the controller player that you know you would most likely want to play like and just really copy their settings. And that way, you're already going to have some of the most optimal settings to play in Season 6, and then you can just find to them yourself to eventually reach something that's just better for you. you know, so we've created our own set of controller settings that have been combined from multiple top-tier pros and configured for success. So these are settings that have been tailored for players who use the linear mode, which is what 70% of controller pros and players in general use like right now. Linear is the mode that you want to use when you're up close and personal with another player considering the new shotgun makeshift and primal meta that we're in right now. So most of your fights are going to be happening up close in this patch. You know, most players agree that mechanics and shotgun aim is like way better on the linear input curve and is the key to success in competitive modes. You know, mechanics like ADSing and shotgun aim are way easier to control in linear and are just very important this season. However, many also argue that exponential is just as good, especially with some of the best controller pros, you know, read an unknown and using it as their input curve. Exponential is just way harder to control, especially in a solo game mode where you have to rely on really hitting your shots and really never messing up a build or edit. So for now, make sure to stay on linear and just practice with your sensitivity so you feel like you're ready. If you're still struggling on linear, okay, make sure to head over to ProGuys.com where our VOD review system will help you find out exactly where you're going wrong so you can just really improve fast. So there are a whole bunch bunch of options when it comes to settings of Fortnite for controller players. So it's understandable if you're still wondering what each one is actually really used for. Well, we got the answers, all right? All right, so guys, first up, controller auto run and build immediately are two settings that you need to have on. They allow you to always sprint when fighting. They really help you place your builds instantly and edit hold time should always be on the lowest. So you can just edit and build in perfect synchronization. So keep vibration off as it may be hectic in an end game or intense fights. Your edit and build mold multipliers make your sensitivity faster by the amount that you set it to and should always be around 2.0 as it allows you to change your speed with ease. All right, guys, up next, you should turn on advanced settings. These help you narrow your sensitivity down to the exact percentage. Change your look vertical and horizontal speed to around 40 to 50% and keep every other setting off in the look sensitivity section, all right? as it really tampers with your accuracy. Look sensitivity is how fast you can move your character around and really is the most important setting for having an accurate level of aim. This is something that I had to work with for a long time and for me personally, it was so annoying. I just, it was so annoying until I got this down. So definitely get this to where it's comfortable for you. ADS setting, which means aim down sights, helps with AR, SMG, and scoped weapon aim. So keep the look horizontal and vertical speed at around 6 to 15% as lower ADS sensitivity rewards huge damage. Never use any boost as they just add acceleration when aiming and will almost always throw your aim off. You don't want that to happen. Right after that is look dampening time, which should also remain at zero. Keep your look input curve on linear since every single setting corresponds perfectly with linear mode. And there are also advanced settings that affect your gameplay, such as dead zone and, and aim assist strength. Aim assist strength is obvious and means exactly what you would expect. <laughs> Always keep your aim assist strength on 100%. Anything under than this, then you're not gonna be really winning too many games. 
Dead Zone is a mechanic that allows a small area around the thumbstick to not be detected. And this allows you to have less stick drift and keeps your aim aligned with your joysticks. Depending on how good your controller is, this setting may be completely different. So you should definitely experiment with this to really get it right, all right? This is also one last option, which is a foot controller. You know, if you don't use a foot controller, which 99% of Fortnite players really don't, then keep every setting disabled in the foot controller section. All right, so guys, for our question of the day, I wanna ask you this, all right? Do you use linear or exponential? Are you a closer range master, you know, deleting your enemies with shotguns on the linear aim curve, or do you just, you know, beam from far away with exponential? Let us know down below, and uh, we'll definitely be reading them. All right, so if you want to be an optimal controller player, then paying attention to the binds that you're using is one of the most important factors that will impact how quickly and how efficiently that you can actually play. All right, for example, every single controller pro switched over to Builder Pro years ago. And if you haven't, then we recommend that you guys do it as fast as possible, like right now. Yeah, like literally like right now. But keep watching the video, though. All right. Builder Pro allows you to place every piece with the tap of a single bind, giving you the most control over your gameplay. Choosing binds for controller is pretty simple, and for the most part, even the default settings can be considered optimal for competitive gameplay. Many pros play on default settings with little to no changes, but instead have just modded controllers that really give them full control while playing. And if you can spend money on pro controllers such as like the Scuff Impact or Xbox Elite, it's definitely worth your wallet. These controllers come with almost full customizations and have four paddles in the back of the controller. Paddles are definitely the most useful mod on a controller as they really give you four extra buttons that you can just press and they enable all your settings to be used at the same time. But just remember, anybody can be the best on a normal Xbox or PS4 controller. I have one, a normal one. So, <laughs> so don't be discouraged if you can't get a modern one. If you still need help figuring out your controller binds, use your resources and find binds that really fit you from other professional players. And, you know, after you're done copying down those binds and other settings, you need to really practice and learn from the best. You know, a great way of learning and improving on controllers is by watching our previous controller videos. But you just remember, guys, everybody starts at a low point and, you know, the player with the best mentality always succeeds. I've been saying this for how long now? If you've been listening to Your Motivation Guy, I've always said that mentality is everything. You know, there's some talented players out there, unfortunately, that will never be, you know, in the spotlight, like some of your favorite pros. And it's just really because of their mentality. Like you can have the best mechanics, you can have the best skills, you can have the best, you know, building and editing. And if you're the type of person that just starts struggling, and then all of a sudden, you're just struggling with gamer rage, and you know, you're, you're toxic, with other players and people don't want to play with you it doesn't really matter how talented you are but use this as motivation guys to practice consistently all right bunch of crunch time to recap this video remember to copy down these settings and really just practice them never get demotivated because as soon as you get used to these settings you're gonna be an entirely new different player dominating your fights without a doubt make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel we're almost at 1 million subscribers where we're gonna release my story your motivation guy of how i made it to where i'm at today and make sure to connect with me on my instagram as well and i'll see you soon peace